Which is better at ray tracing, NVIDIA or AMD graphics cards? The answer is obvious, right? The green team has dedicated ray tracing hardware and the red team, well, the red team doesn't. Well, hold on just one minute. It's not all RTX and rainbows for NVIDIA when it comes to ray tracing exclusivity. In fact, there's one benchmark, one engine that currently offers ray tracing to both sides of the GPU silicon coin, Crytek's CryEngine and the Neon Noir demo. And World of Tanks, I suppose. Two benchmarks, but whatever. Anyways, today we'll be pitting red versus green, GPU versus GPU, AMD versus Nvidia in a ray tracing battle royale in CryEngine's Neon Noir demo. I'm Dave. And I'm Jacob. And we've got some benchmarking to do. We sure have. You may be familiar with the Neon Noir demo from when it first debuted back in March this year. The team over at CryEngine demonstrated a unique hardware agnostic implementation of real-time ray tracing within the Neon Noir demo at GDC 2019, brazenly demonstrating accurate reflections working on AMD RX Vega 56 as if it were no big NVIDIA affronting deal. Yeah, Vega. We were told at the time that the Neon Noir demo was running at 1080p and achieved a hearty 30 FPS on AMD's second tier Vega architecture graphics card in 2017, the Vega 56. But since then we've had new cards from AMD, the RX 5700 series, and Nvidia with these super refreshes. This week marks the Neon Noir demo's public debut, meaning it is now available for all to try out themselves. So why not give AMD and Nvidia's latest silicon a run for their money and see how it all shakes out. Nvidia's latest RTX 20 series graphics cards feature specialized silicon designed for the highly demanding task of ray tracing called RT cores. These full fat Turing cards fare particularly well with ray tracing in comparison to aging architectures, easily crushing Nvidia's Pascal graphics cards mano a mano in real time workloads. Yet Crytek's solution, coming in CryEngine 5.5, is seemingly able to bypass some, but not all, of these hardware requirements. This was achieved utilizing the company's own lighting system, building upon the voxel cone tracing already within the engine under the CryEngine total illumination functionality. What helps it along is the ability to dynamically switch from mesh tracing to voxel tracing without any perceived loss in quality, or at least according to the devs. It also massages performance by utilizing established techniques like environment probes or screen space ambient occlusion whenever it can. These techniques help to minimize how much legit ray tracing is required, making it a little less tiresome on your poor old GPU. Like many ray tracing implementations, Crytek have also chosen to limit ray tracing to certain effects. In Neon Noir, that's real-time ray trace reflections and refractions. Other effects, such as shadows and ambient occlusion, well, it's just been deemed too costly on performance at this point. So maybe one day, maybe. For the purposes of today's testing, we're opting for the Intel Core i9-9900KS, thus ensuring none of our guinea pigs are held back from their full potential. We're also opting for the Ultra preset, which renders reflections at full resolution. The Neon Noir benchmark also features a very high preset if you want to lessen the load. This renders the reflections at a reduced resolution. The compute efficiency afforded to Nvidia in the Neon Noir demo through its use of dedicated ray tracing hardware is considerable. The GTX 1080 Ti features 3584 CUDA cores, while the RTX 2060 Super features just 2176. In any traditional rasterized workload, the former would crush the latter into smithereens. In Neon Noir, a ray trace workload, this advantage dissipates entirely, leaving both cards on near equal stepping. That alone should speak to the huge boon that dedicated ray tracing hardware offers, even across the 34 RT cores, one for each SM, located within the RTX 2060 Super's TU-106 GPU. The RTX 2060 Super meets its match in AMD's RX 5700, a 7 nanometer chip built on the RDNA architecture. What's lacking on AMD's part, however, is dedicated ray tracing silicon, and this card falls dramatically short of the RTX 2060 Super's average FPS across all resolutions as a result. The predictably close battle between the RX 5700 XT and RTX 2070 Super isn't quite so near run in Neon Noir either. The RTX 2070 Super dominates the RX 5700 XT despite their relatively equal footing in rasterized tasks. What can be said for AMD's 7 nanometer RDNA architecture is its ability to hit over 60 FPS on average in Crytek's demo. Both the RX 5700 and XT manage this task, with the latter even managing 99th percentile performance that is damn near playable. AMD can ray trace after all. You just can't beat hardware acceleration, and NVIDIA's RTX 20 series has got plenty of that for real-time ray tracing. 
Even the GTX 1080 Ti's CUDA core supremacy couldn't match the small number of dedicated RT cores in the RTX 2060 Super. And while Neon Noir may be GPU agnostic, it does still favour Nvidia Silicon. Crytek promised to optimise their benchmark for ray tracing hardware and the latest APIs earlier this year, and they delivered. The demo has been optimised to take advantage of performance enhancements delivered by the latest generation of graphics cards from all manufacturers and supported APIs like Vulkan and DX12. But AMD will soon have its own ray tracing hardware, RDNA 2. Soon. Soon ish. Its next gen take on AMD Navi GPUs are expected to launch late 2020, around the same time we expect Nvidia to shake things up with 7 nanometer. We'll have to revisit the Neon Noir demo when that day comes. For now, we hope you've enjoyed today's video, and if you did, give us a like, subscribe, and all that business. Also, check out PCGamesN.com for more in hardware and in gaming. Until next time, sugar. Bye.